Welcome back once again fellow problem solvers. John East here. Share, like and subscribe. Stay tuned and tell your friends. Today we are talking about the method. The method of how to work with constant ratios and constant differences by using tables. Stay tuned. Good day fellow problem solvers. Hopefully you're doing well. So today we're looking at numeric patterns and understanding tables and rules. Remember we've gone through numeric number patterns with a linear pattern, that's a constant difference. We've gone through linear number patterns, that's a geometric pattern, which means a constant ratio. But today this works for both of those. We're looking at tables and rules and how we apply that. Okay, so how to understand it. This is like the basics of work further calculations that you'll be focusing on. So what is a rule? And what is a formula? A rule is an explanation of how the pattern is arranged. Like for instance, y equals negative 2x plus 8. If I would say that in words, I would say a value times negative 2, and then you have to add 8. And that will give us the output value. But if I should put that into a formula, a formula is a set of instructions for carrying out a calculation. So then I would say y equals negative 2x plus 8. But to understand this fully, we really need to understand what is x and what is y and how we define it. So first of all, x is known as our input value. So that's the value we choose to put into the formula. So that is known as our input value. In this table, it's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. And two. And once we've applied the formula, then we will get an output value, in this case, y. So that will be the answer of our calculations. In other words, after we've done the calculation, what is the output that we get? What is the final answer of our calculation? So in this case, we'll have a formula y equals negative 2 times the input value, which I'll put in brackets, plus 8. Now, as we do the calculations, we'll have the input value of negative 3, then negative 2, then negative 1, then 0, and so on and so forth. 1 and then 2. And we'll have those separate answers in our calculation. So let's take it step by step and do the calculation. So first of all, negative 3 as our input value. So let's see. Negative 2 times negative 3 a negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So we've got a 6 plus 8. And then you guys can guess the answer for me. Let's see if you can do it. It's equal to 14. And that's our first output value for the input value of negative 3. Now, we write down the same formula. Y equals negative 2 times the input value which in this case is negative 2, and then plus 8. Can you see we're following the formula? Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, a positive 4, plus 8 is equal to 12. Okay, and that's our output value. Let's go for the next input value of negative 1. So y equals negative 2 times the input value plus 8, which in this case the input value is negative 1. That means it will give us a positive 2 plus 8, and we'll have an answer of 10. There we go, we're making good progress here, right? So, output value of 10. Now, the next formula, and think carefully how a 0 will, will um, influence the calculation. So, you can just write in the 10 there, just quickly. Okay, so y equals a negative 2 times a 0 plus 8. And you can see I've already written in the answer as 8, because you've probably also picked up there is a pattern here. Okay, and we'll talk about that at the end. Let's look at our input value of 1 and then of 2. So y equals negative 2 times 1 plus 8. And then it's a negative 2 plus 8. Remember, negative 2 is our starting position. We're moving to the right if we add 8. So starting from a negative 2 plus 8 goes to a positive 6. Okay, that's our output value 6, then 
Our input value again is 2 in this case, negative 2 times 2, plus 8, and that will give us a negative 4, plus 8. Again, starting position 2 and moving to the right, it's equal to 4. And that's our set of output values. So you could clearly see this is a linear pattern. There's a constant difference of negative 2, and you can also see that next to the negative 2. Thank you for your time. Stay tuned for more.